Hey everyone, it's Kelly for Soy and Shane. Thank you for joining me. I am going to attempt to make another loaf of soap today using the Master Batch of Lye. And I have gone through my calculations three times now to make sure that I've got it correct. And hopefully I won't end up with soap in my bucket as we did with the um, Dragon's Blood Soap. The fragrance oil I'm using today is called Vanilla Oud from Aroma and it has notes of lemon, strawberry, oud, cedarwood and vanilla. And despite the fact that it is a vanilla fragrance, there's no vanillin in it so that is an absolute added bonus. So in my bucket here I've got 2 kilos of oil and I've worked out I need 285 grams of lye solution which we've done through the soap calc. So what I've got in my jug here is a total of 570 grams of liquid so that's my lye amount times 2 to get my water. And then in this other jug here which I got on my scale I took the amount of water that I needed, I'm soaping at 33%, I took the 660 grams of water it said, took the lye amount of 285 away from that and I now have 375 grams of water which I'm going to add straight into my oils here. So the next thing I'm going to do is pour my lye solution into the bucket. I'm going to mix it up and then I'm going to split it out for the colours. The base of my soap I've got some water dispersible titanium dioxide um, and I actually did take a little bit of the extra water out to dilute the diox or titanium dioxide with. I have some activated charcoal which I'm going to do a drop swirl with and I'm also going to do a mica swirl again and I've got some extravagance mica in here. It's a really pretty mica, it's um, what they call a synthetic mica and it has this really pretty glittery effect to it and that glittery effect does come through in the soaps as well. So I'm going to get my lye solution in here, mix it up and then split it out for those colours. Alright, so we've got the fragrance in there and I'm going to pour some of this white in here. And I am simply just doing that black and white soap. But what I'm going to do with this black, I'm going to pour the rest of that fragrance oil in there. Give it a mix and then I'm going to do my mica swirl a little bit different to how I've done it in the past. Normally I would just put that mica, like drop the mica into the soap mould. But what I'm going to do today, we'll get that nice and mixed. I'm going to pour my gold straight into my black and hope that this works. So just give that a little bit of a stir but not too much because I don't want to muddy it up. And then we're going to drop swirl this into the white. Alright, so I'm just going to leave a little bit in my jug here so we can decorate the top of the soap. I'm just going to get that a little bit in there. Wipe up my bit of mess. And then I'm going to pour this white in there and that will move that black around a little bit more to give some more really nice swirls. Alright, so I have a fair bit of soap batter left in here. So I'm just going to pour it into this extra soap mould and then this will either be done up as like a separate little soap that will go in as a special or quite possibly because I really like this smell this one will be for me so I'll just get that bucket scraped out all right so I'm just coming back to this black in here and I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit more on the top here
Alright, so I've just got myself a chopstick. I'm just going to mix that black through my little tester one here. Give it a bit of a knock down. And then I'm just going to swirl just the very top of this. Just going around in like little leaf shapes. Just going to add a little bit of texture to the top there. It is making a little bit of grey in there, so there's that contrast of black and grey with a bit of gold, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for on the inside. Even though I've only used that one colour, I'm hoping to get a contrast of black, grey, and the white in there, and then that little bit of gold as well. I've got just a little bit of the dregs left in here that have come off the sides and settled to the bottom, so just a few drops over the top there. Right, so just to get that gold to swirl through, I've just got a skewer, so it's a little bit finer than the chopstick. I'm just going to move it around a little bit so that it's kind of swirled around on the top rather than just in little droplets there. I am super happy with how this one has come up on the top. It's exactly how I wanted it to look. I'm going to stop playing with it and leave it sit here for about 18 hours and then I'm going to come back and cut it and see what we've got on the inside. The white did stay more fluid than the black and that's just the result of using the activated charcoal in it. So we should get a really nice defined swirl through this one. Right, so we are back to have a look at Vanilla Oud on the inside and the camera isn't playing tricks. Unfortunately, it has discolored to this yellow. I was really shocked and surprised when I saw it this morning and especially as I was under the assumption that this was actually a vanillin-free fragrance oil. The way I had seen that it was vanillin free is that on my preferred suppliers page there's a little box that you can tick to say to sort out all the vanillin free fragrance oils and I ticked that and this vanilla oud had come up in there. I did scroll down a little bit through the description to check that it was body safe which it was but I didn't scroll any further down. When I looked at it this morning and I scrolled further down it does say that it has 1.4%. So lesson to me is don't just trust that little checkbox, actually go in and double check because there may be some little admin errors in there. Now the other thing you will also notice with this soap is that I do have soda ash on it and for some reason whenever I do these low top soaps I always get soda ash on them. If I pile the soap up a little bit or do the piping I never get the soda ash and it's exactly the same recipe so I don't understand why it's just these low tops. It doesn't matter how much rubbing alcohol I spray on it, how often I spray it, it doesn't matter if I insulate it or not, I still get soda ash on them. What I wanted to share with all the ones that are here in Australia is if you're looking for a steamer to use on the top of your soaps and you don't want one of those big bulky ones, this is a steamer which I found on a website called Cakes Around Town and they use it for steaming the royal icing and that sort of thing on cakes. And it's just the right size. Um, it doesn't take up too much room. It's um, easy to store away. You simply take the top off, pour some water in, and then it's just like a little mini kettle, but they've got the steamer on the top. So all I'm going to do is turn this on and just let it come up to the boil and some steam will come out the top. Okay, so this has literally taken about 45 to 60 seconds to come to boil it sits here rumbling away and then it throws the steam out the top here and all I'm now going to do is just gently move my soap down it and I will have to pick it up just to do the top end here and that will steam off any of that soda ash and then it also leaves the soap nice and bright and shiny. So hopefully you can now see what a difference it has made to the top of that soap, getting all that soda ash off. It's now nice and bright and shiny. I'm just going to leave it sit here for about 10 minutes and then I'll come back and cut it up. Alright, so I have just let that one sit and dry off for a little bit. I'm just going to line it up onto the soap cutter. I am going to cut a couple of sample pieces off the ends of this soap because my sample box is running quite low. So I'm just going to get that one on there and because I've got no additives we can just cut straight through this way. Now because my water content was slightly higher than what I usually use, my soap is nice and soft so it should just glide straight through. And 
And so this is the sample piece I'll just pull off there. And here is that first piece and you can see how that gold mica has just weaved its way through that black. I'm really happy with how that's um, gone through there. I think I'm far happier with that sort of result of the mica swirl than actually dropping it straight into the mould. It gives those really fine gold vein lines. Uh, here's another piece. We've got some beautiful swirls through this one and yeah those gold I think the doing the mica drop swirl into the pot has just really given some finer sort of swirls it's also not left the side of the the soap all marked like sometimes it can um, sometimes that mica can just get everywhere and you pick up a bar of soap and then you're stained with that mica drizzle whereas this way it's all encapsulated really nicely in that black and it just really pops off there So it is going into that creamy sort of yellowy look. I'm hoping it doesn't go brown and that it does stay in that sort of yellowy colour because I think that will look really nice against the black there. And I will remember next time not to trust that little checkbox and to go further into the fragrance and double check it there. So I'm really pleased with how this one has come up. So if you've enjoyed watching how I make my vanilla oud soap, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel? I do bring out a weekly video and if um, you hit the little bell sign, it will let you know the next time I upload a video. So thank you so much for joining me today and until the next video, have a great week. Bye.